Hi chemistry students, this is Johnson and we're on page 11 of the chapter 14 acids and bases AP Chem notes. So this um, has some blanks in your notes. You can pause the video to fill all this in. I am going to keep moving on and actually work a problem that works you through these steps. So what we're doing in this set of the notes is solving weak acid equilibrium problems. So far we've only done strong acids and strong bases. So today it's weak acids. And if you'll notice as filling in these blanks, um, a few of these steps should sound really familiar. It's just doing ice tables and equilibrium stuff like we did from chapter 13. There's just a couple of extra steps added on to the beginning and the end when we're dealing with acids and bases. Okay, so the problem that we are going to work is this one. Calculate the pH of a 1.00 times 10 to the negative 4 molar solution of acetic acid. The Ka of acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So here are the steps that we're going to go through, and these are pretty much the same steps that were listed on that previous page of the notes. Number one, determine the major species in fish. And these steps are laborious, but I'm going to encourage you to do them for every acid-base problem. It makes it a lot easier to kind of figure what's going on. So in a solution of acetic acid, we're going to have water, certainly, the major species. We are also going to have the acetic acid, which you need to have this formula memorized. It's CH3COOH. That's the way I write it. You can write it one of several ways. Okay, the other thing that you should think about and just know is that water, remember, it auto-ionizes, so just a teeny tiny portion of water is splitting up into OH- and H+, plus or H3O+. Plus. Just, I mean, minute amounts. So that's not a major species, but it's good to think about. Same for CH3COOH. A little bit of it is splitting up into CH3COO- and H plus or H3O plus when it bonds with water, right? And there's a little bit more of the, the acetic acid ionizing than water. Water's really tiny, but we need to know that this is happening, okay? So that's what's in our solution. Um, and this is write a balanced equation for the major producer of H plus. So anytime we have water with an acid, even if it's a weak acid, the acid is always going to be the major producer of H+. We can essentially ignore the fact that water is ionizing into H+, and OH-, and just focus on the acid. So the balanced chemical equation for what's happening with the H+, I'm actually going to write it underneath here, step four. Here's my balanced chemical equation. CH3CO2H, that's another way you can write acetic acid, and that's aqueous, plus H2O liquid, yields, and this is a reversible reaction, it's a weak acid act acting in an equilibrium system, CH3CO2 minus aqueous plus H3O plus aqueous. And these are reactions that you just need to know how to write, make sure you're familiar with them. Here's our balanced chemical reaction, we did that. Number three, set up the equilibrium expression and fill in known values. So this is just like we did in chapter 13, off to the side. I'm going to write my Ka expression. It would be the concentration H3O plus times the concentration of the conjugate base. Remember, we're working with conjugates, acids, and bases here. All divided by the concentration of the weak acid. And I leave water out because it's a pure liquid. The thing that I know that I fill in here is the Ka value. From the problem, it tells me that the Ka value is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 8, times 10 to the negative 5, excuse me. And I'm just going to draw the arrow here because I don't have room to fill it in on my paper. Okay, we did step three. Step four is set up an ice table and solve for x. So just like we've done before, my ice table set up. Initially, what I add to the beaker would be a 1... 0.00 times 10 to the negative 4 molar, or 1 to 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter of acetic acid. Water we don't worry about because it's concentrated so high. Initially, there's zero moles of each of these products because it takes some time for equilibrium to be established. So the change here is minus x for every x moles of acetic acid that break up and dissociate. We're going to get x moles of the base and x moles of H3O+. Plus. And at equilibrium, my values would be 1 times 10 to the negative 4 minus x, and then x and x. And again, I'm not worrying about water. Okay. 
the next thing that we're going to do is solve for x. So my ka expression, I'm plugging in equilibrium values to the ka expression. So 1 times 10 to the negative 5 is the value of ka for my acid. The expression would look like this. x squared, or the setup I should say. Right. And I don't have any exponents here because I have no stoichiometric coefficient. This squared comes from having two x's next to each other. So remember, it's not 2x, it's x times x, or x squared. All right, so to solve for x here, this would turn into kind of a nasty um, quadratic if we were to for x. So what I'm going to do is the shortcut. I'm going to assume that this minus x is negligible. Remember, acetic acid is a weak acid. Very little of it dissociates to form these products. So I'm going to say that this x that's being lost is very tiny amount. And then when I go to solve, it's super easy. I just multiply both sides, 1 times 10 to the negative 4, and then take the square root. The x value that I get in this case, and I'm going to say x is approximately equal to, because I did an approximation by crossing out that x. This x value is approximately equal to 4.2 times 10 to the negative 5. Now remember, we're going for pH here. So to get the pH, we need the equilibrium concentration of H3O+. Plus. If x is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 5, this should roughly my H3O plus concentration. However, we must, must, must do this check the assumption or use the 5% rule. So here's how we do the 5% rule. To be valid, x must be less than 5% of the number that it was subtracted from. Right? So here's how we would set that up. Here's the check step. I would say my x value, my approximate x value, 4.2 times 10 to the negative 5, divided by the number that I subtracted it from, which is this guy right here, 1.00 times 10 to the negative 4, and then multiplied by 100, this must be less than 5%. And in this case, when we solve this out, we get uh, 42%. In this case, that means that the assumption is absolutely not valid. If you ever run into this, which you shouldn't on a real AP problem, but you need to know what to do in case of work problems where you ran into this, this, in this case, since the assumption is not valid, you have to actually go through the quadratic formula to find the value of x. Let's think why the assumption was not valid in this case. We know that acetic acid is weak. It's not going to lose that many um, moles due to dissociation, but in this case, there was a tiny initial concentration of acetic acid. So since it's so tiny, the amount of H3O plus that it's producing is not negligible, and this minus X is not negligible. That's why we have such a high percentage here, less than, not less than 5%. So in order to solve the quadratic, I'm not going to make you do it all the way in your notes. I've kind of worked some of it out for you. Here's the quadratic equation. You'd have to solve for your two um, different values of X. And what you get is X equals... 3.5 times 10 to the negative fifth and negative 5.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. And by the way, here's our A, here's our B, here's our C, just in case you want to try solving it yourself. In this case, we can't have a negative x value. That doesn't make any sense. So the x value that we would go with is here. Right? This is my legitimate x value. Now, to determine pH, I just did the negative log of the H3O plus or the H plus at equilibrium. So that's my x value. So I would plug that in to give me an expression like this. And you should be able to kind of estimate this in your head. Right, we should have a pH of a little bit lower than 5 because our, um, we're a little bit above 1 times 10 to the negative 5. And what the, the pH that you actually get is 4. 0.456. Let's just take a moment to check sig figs here. I have three sig figs in this pH value. If I look back at my work up top, the Ka is the limiting number of sig figs. I only have two sig figs in my answer. So I would round this to 4.46 for my pH. And that is how we solve a weak acid pH problem. Okay, on the next page, there's a problem of your own to try solving. I want you to work through those steps, see if you can come up with the right answer, and I will show you the answer in just a moment. So go ahead and pause the video now as you're working the steps. And when you're ready, I will show you the answer. 
here is the correct answer for exercise 11. We should come up with a pH of 4.229. And again, if I'm looking at sig figs, my Ka is limiting, so I really should round off to two sig figs, or 4.23. In this case, our assumption was valid. So make sure that you are understanding the steps and not just copying down the answer without really thinking about what you're doing. It's gonna be critical that you know these steps going forward. Okay. Exercise 12 is calculating the pH of weak acid mixtures and that is where we will pick up in class.